Hello, everyone. It's Koda from 19. Today is day 71 in my challenge today. Uh, from the last video, I finally started to write some shader code, uh, which is a ray generation shader code in the Vulkan API. Uh, we've seen some constant color rendered scene uh, with the grayscale image. So everything uh, works fine, I think. And now I'll write some, some ray tracing code. From now on, okay, let's start. Before I move on, I think uh, it's better to add some uh, compile definitions for selective shader. So in the top of the application, no, let's go to the macros. Fine. Oh, perfection. Three. Perfection. 
So with this flag, I want to turn off the graphics pipeline without commenting here. So I just commented this part, but we can just use if that instead of the commands. So if that use ray tracing, we are going to this part or else this will be selected. Uh, and the uniform buffer, let's go to the graphics pipeline. Update uniform buffer. Change shader. I want to inverse some matrices. That's the first Inver uh, U inverse network, which is inverse UVO.U or project inverse. Okay. This as universe. Mm. Okay. So let me explain that why we are using the inverse transformation in our shader ring, uh, shader code. Mm -hmm. So first of all, the matrix is just a transform of something. So if we have uh, some form of uh, the shape, if we multiply the uh, sum of matrix to them, it make uh, it means that we are transforming the shape. Uh, based on this multi uh, multiplier as a matrix. So the uh, matrix product with some of the shape make another shape. Uh, this is a new shape or can move this shape to another space or uh, by the way, if we if we use a homogeneous coordinate, uh, by the way, also we can shear the shape or scale scale the shape or rotate it. Uh, so we can apply some uh, various trans transformation uh, to the some some of the shape by multiplying the metrics. Now think about that. So. Let's assume that this 
uh, this equation uh, is established by multiplying the matrix. But what we are seeing right now in the projection space is just only B, right? Is a multiplied result B. But what if we multiply the inverse of matrix to the B like this? What if we multiply matrix, uh, inverse of matrix like this? In this case, if we just arrange the equation again, This will be looks like this. The matrix inverse of matrix product uh, with the matrix mer uh, product with A. So uh, we can apply the communicated rules uh, from the linear algebra properties. So if we uh, multiply in order, but just uh, no communicated. Uh, we can do the mass operation, uh, multiply op operation for the inverse of matrix and the matrix first. So this will be uh, equivalent to identity matrix, right? And this I multiply uh, product with A, just A. Like this. So what does this mean? So if we know about uh, if we know that what the transformation applied before uh, about uh, some of the metrics, if we know that we can take uh, inverse of uh, some of the transformation matrices, and if we multiply the transformed matrix again, then we can get the original shape again. So that's exactly what the what the inverse matrix does. So let's back to this shader code. We want to get an origin. Okay? So this origin is um how can I say that? This origin is represented as a local coordinate. But if we want to apply this coordinate, uh, if we want to make this origin valid in our world coordinate, we need to inverse this transformation at uh, this, uh, this point into the view space of our we have. Uh, no, we need to multiply the inverse of view space to send it in the world coordinate, right? And the NDC coordinate, uh, which is a normalized device coordinate, is represented uh, in the projection space. So if we want to get the NDC coordinate represented in the world coordinate, we need to multiply the inverse of projection matrix first. Then we get a and this coordinate represented in the view space. Then if we multiply the view inverse of view matrix again, we can get the um, target points represented in the world space. Finally, we get uh, two words, uh, two points represented in the word space, so that we can get a uh, direction of the ray by by subtracting the target uh, target points with the ray origin.
And that's what exactly this code does. So let me write again, uh, use space algorithm to the word space algorithm. NDC to the clip space. Projection space to the view space and we normalize first and then we can get the view space uh, no. view space direction to the workspace direction okay So you may guess that why we don't subtract the at the target by the rate origin because we are using the rate origin as a zero comma zero uh, zero zero zero. So these target x y j g already represented it by uh, this already based on the origin of zero zero zero. So we don't need to subtract about uh, to it by the origin because it already has a belly direction from the origin. Okay. For the late flags, GL ray non extend. No. We're going to use uh, this off pack objects. For geometry is considered back. And we are not going to take care of some transparent object uh, geometry right now uh, for the simplicity. And the mean next distance array. So in the physics, the ray which is a light can be, uh, it has the infinite distance can go, but in our computer, it, we have some, uh, we have the computation or limitation when we do something. Okay? So we don't need to um, take care of something that already out of scope, like, while we can see the distance of 100, then we don't need to take care of some distance out of the 100, right? So that's why we set some ray mean 
Great Max. Here. Uh, and T means that prefix T. is magnitude of ray direction vector okay. if you're familiar to linear algebra you can understand these statements so it means that by, uh, simply the line a line can be represented in the linear algebra as with a, a point and the direction. So from the point, we can um, how can I say that? So from the origin. The uh, is the base of direction, and by multiplying some magnitude uh, by by very eight magnitude uh, magnitude of the ray direction, we can uh, draw some continuous line in the in our space. Trace ray. Mask. I will record set the calling mask. Simulation. Sure. I search. T value Hello location. <laughs> Her time constant established the color coli relationship of payload. Mm -hmm. 
allow you to choose where you want to the cold shader of the scroll. For shader colors involved as a direct user to this. So we can establish some of the color and the quality relationship of ray payload in Axter uh, in the compile time by setting uh, some of the offset and the starting point in the tricks after. This is now tricks ray. Both variables should have the same structure. This allows uh, to determine at runtime where quality shader offers are written to, which can be particularly useful for recursive ray tracers. Okay. This index within the shader group. So this part is used for the alias, the ray payload extern of the location specified by the color of trace ray extern. Ray team in value. So finally, uh, I'd like to launch an ID external next slide. Payloads, right? Hit value. Uh, respective before respecting lab sprays twenty five.
for an HTD plus plus row. Oh, there is no time. Okay. Usage in the buffer is a sampler task of the buffer.
Okay, I think uh, there is uh, some issue that I can configure uh, right now. So I, I think uh, I need to do this after this recording. Okay, I think this is enough for today. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next video.